Let's talk about a very specific continuous probability distribution or, or family of them really in one specific case of that. And then what we're going to do is kind of talk about some other properties you should know. So the standard normal probability distribution is what we think of as the classic bell curve, right? A classic bell curve with some properties. So if it's a standard normal probability distribution, it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And that's really important because that's going to tell you a couple of things. First, because the bell-shaped curve, the normal probability distribution is symmetric, it means that half of the area will be above zero and half of the area will be below zero. And it means there's a 50% probability that a randomly chosen standard normal random variable is above zero and a 50% probability it's below zero. Remember to make that connection between area and probability. The other thing we know from the empirical rule going back is that this span that I have colored in red here from negative 2 to 2 contains about 95% of the total area under the curve. And why can I say that? Because the standard normal probability distribution has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. That means minus 2 is equivalent of 2 standard deviations below, plus 2 is equivalent to 2 standard deviations above, and going from negative 2 to positive 2 under a standard normal curve, or any bell curve for that matter, if you're talking about 2 standard deviations below average and 2 above average, you're capturing approximately 95%, right? So that's kind of the idea. So standard normal curves are basically bell curves that have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. One thing to also keep in mind is that the total area under any one of these probability distributions, regardless of what type, if it's a continuous probability distribution, the total area underneath it is going to be one. All right, now the standard normal probability distribution is standardized to have this mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. That's a very special case. In fact, there are many normal probability curves, but those curves differ only with respect to two variables. Their mean and their standard deviation will differ. And because those differ, the shapes of the curve are slightly different, right? So if, for example, the standard deviation tends to be tiny, the curve will be very kind of peaked. It'll be a very tall and peaked bell curve. If this number is larger, it'll tend to be more gently sloping like a hill, right? Where is it located on the number line? That's going to be determined by mu, the mean. So if you switch around these variables or you know change or substitute values in there, you can create an infinite number of cases, right? You can literally put any number you want for the mean, any number you want for the standard deviation, and with that you can create an infinite number of curves that are all bell-shaped. However, they'll just look slightly different with regard to how you know compressed they are how sloping or peaked they are, et cetera, right? and where they're located on the number line. Those are the kinds of things you can change by altering these two variables. So there really is a family of normal probability curves, but the one we'll most play around with is the standard normal probability distribution. And the reason why we'll do that is because since we know the mean is zero, the standard deviation is one, we could then, you know, instead of actually calculating probabilities every time we have to do one of these problems, we could just create one special table called the standard normal probability table and we can use that to solve all the problems that are related to bell curves. In order to make that work, we're going to have to standardize non-standard normal random variables, convert them into what we'll call standard normal random variables, or you can call them z-scores for that matter. We'll convert a non-standard normal random variable into a z-score, and then we'll use this z-probability table, which gives us the probabilities that we need. So essentially, even though there's a family of normal probability distribution curves, right, so there's a whole bunch of them depending on what their mean and standard deviation are, we will not use a table for every unique situation we're encountering, right? So IQs are normally distributed with a mean of 100, standard deviation of 15. We won't use an IQ probability table, right? We'll just use the standard normal probability table, and we'll convert these IQ scores into Z scores, and that will allow us to use the Z table to get the probabilities we want and need.